It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New England Patriots. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the New England Patriots. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white line. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yes, a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. would teed up and we are underway off we go in Foxborough oh a good looking return set up here Jamal Agnew he will score touchdown I know a lot of special teams coaches they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do and others have egos that their players can't keep up with and they say challenge him kick it to him the way he runs as fast as he is I wouldn't challenge him at all I do everything possible to keep it away he is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there on here Brandon McManus for the point after And this is up and good to score now 7-0 Jaguars. So how about that for an intriguing start? The opening kickoff of the ball game, return for a touchdown. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. So here come the Patriots now on offense. And they will be led out by their second year quarterback. And he's a young man who's always believed in his talents. Didn't have many offers out of high school. Ended up at Houston Baptist and put up monster numbers. Decided to take the next step and go to Western Kentucky. And he did it again. Set NCAA records for passing touchdowns and passing yards in a single season. Now the big jump to the NFL. This guy's like a very skilled point guard. Knows how to deal and put the ball in the proper place with every throw. Zappi going right to the air here. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. A ball on the 32. It's second and two. Off the fake, Zappi. Open man is Kendrick Bourne. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. 
Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Zappi looks to throw it. Short pass caught by Henry. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's a second and five. They'll run it. This is Ramondre Stevenson. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Zappi on third and two. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Patriots first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. Stevenson now on first and 10. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That good for 22 with a first down. I knew that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side, but how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Kendrick Bourne, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. I do believe we came here to see a game, didn't we? And it looks like he's running what we call routes versus air. You just go out there with your offensive unit and throw the football with no defense. He's five for five on the opening drive. He was on his game there for drive number one, but my only thing is now he can't go any higher than that. He was so perfect. Can he do it again later? Yeah, all he cares about right now is making it 10 for 10, 15 for 15. Keeping that going. And he feels like he can get it done. happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here are the Jags now set to get their first drive. They're led by the number one overall pick of the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college? But the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior, whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations and he's doing everything in his power to follow through. And they'll start on the ground, ETN. And he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Ball on the 27. Here's second and six. Lawrence will throw. Man open. That's Calvin Ridley. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. That's 
These two teams all tied after one. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. A shotgun snap and a give the ETN. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. And this will be into the hands of Ingram downfield. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped at the one. That goes for a gain of 31. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Evan Ingram, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. And the touchdown all set up by the big play one snap before, but they finish it off here with a shorter completion, this time for the score. I like how they stuck with what got them there, right? The big pass play, got the momentum going, right? That's You create it with a play like that, and you come right back with another pass play to finalize things off. Extra point from McManus is good, and that makes the score 14-7. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Out of his end zone, here comes Jalen Rager. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Bailey Zappi and the Patriots out for their next drive. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of the round, too. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Play fake, and now here's Zappi. Now a short one to Gesicki. No gain, and it's second down. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Zappi on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 36. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. That's a play that likely would be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. 
So from the 36 now, first and 10. And Zappi to throw. He'll get this underneath to Stevenson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now Zappi. Over the middle complete. That's Parker. And Parker's going to pick up a Patriots first down as he'll get this down inside the 20. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. That is caught at the seven. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now Zappi. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Juju Smith-Schuster, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up, and then you get a brand new ball game. The extra point by Rylan up and good, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Jaguars ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. Here's Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Now a second and ten. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll push forward here for a good little run as the clock continues to run. Five yards. Now it's third and five. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you, too, in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And 
ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Zappi and the Patriots come up here first and 10 right at the 30. It's Stevenson with a run to begin the drive. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Two yards to go, second down. From the shotgun, Zappi. Pass incomplete. And that right there, his first incompletion of the game, pretty remarkable. So let's start talking about all-time records because with that incompletion, maybe over a two-game sequence or maybe starts a new streak now because Ryan Tannehill, over two games, hit 25 straight. Now, the incompletion, we're, we're taking this record out of play, but Mark Brunel, when he's with Washington, 22 straight completions to start the game. This guy's on fire. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Zappi off play action. Open receiver here, complete, it's Parker. And he's taken down inside the 30. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Oh, I like that play card there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. Zappi now on first and 10. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least if they think a field goal turns out to be the better call here. Here's Chad Ryland now on for the field goal. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they take a 17-14 lead. Well, they don't get a touchdown here on the opening line of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. the kicker Ryland and he'll send this one away 
And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense, and that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. They'll send Kirk in motion right. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. They yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Now Lawrence. Open man, this is Brenton Strange, the tight end. First target, first catch, and a first down. It's a gain of six, and the Jaguar first down. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Looking to throw, Lawrence finds his tight end, Ingram. And he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver with right him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 48 yards rushing for him now. He's only carried the ball four times. We'll definitely see some open running lanes. And he's taking advantage of it right now. But that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. Now Lawrence. That one complete downfield to Kirk. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Two jump plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. But are going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Second down, goal to go. Lawrence. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. This crowd doing all they can. Here's third and goal. Back to throw. Lawrence to the end zone, but it's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. The kick by McManus is good. And we are all tied here in the final stages.
So a big kick to get this back to even. Yet now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get it to overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you. But you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Here's Rager. He's going to bring this one out. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. New England trying to get to place on offense. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. What do you think? Play this safe? Just worry about getting to OT? Yeah, don't make any risky throws. It's going to change the outcome. But if anyone slips, take the big shot. Now second and four. Zappy to throw. This one to board, and he's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And he picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Here's Zappi to throw. Pass on the out route caught by Smith-Schuster. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Here's second down. Zappy to throw. Checking this down to Stevenson. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Well, this defense needing a stop here. Got to have it. Third and nine. Now Zappi. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Oh, boy, this sets up for a huge call now on fourth down because you can try the long field goal. You could go for it. Or you could punt and play for overtime. I am so glad, partner, that I don't have to make those kind of decisions. Let's see what they decide. The Patriots send out their punter, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. And Charles, obviously not much time left. I'm curious to see if there's enough for them to get into field goal range and try to win this thing. And part of you and I both know the safe calls to kneel and just take it into overtime. But it's also very tough to pass up a chance to win it right now as well. But remember, if you do attempt that, it's got to be a big play downfield and still leave yourself enough time to get your field goal unit out there and kick for the win. A tackle by Christian Gonzalez. A gain of 12. First down, Jacksonville. And we 
have a free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. Possession of the football first here in this overtime session as the kick is away from his end zone. Here comes Agnew. And he returns this to the 22. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. They'll get this off to ETN. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Now Lawrence to throw. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. What they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. So five yards here, five on the play, and that'll make it second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. His first catch, and it's a big one in overtime. It's a first down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. On second down, a run with ETN. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. But we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook. A second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Now Lawrence on first down. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the Patriots' 32-yard line. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and three. Lawrence now off the bootleg. A short throw there to Strange shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here in overtime. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it, all right? I've got the, I've got the sweaty palms here with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. 
69 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. Once you get to the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three. Lawrence will throw. That is caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open in the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. And now hold everything. This one perhaps not over yet. The officials will take a look at this just to be certain. Is this a touchdown? That's the question. CD, what are they looking for here? You just need any part of the football to break the plane. You don't need the whole football. It doesn't need to go over the entire white line. It's just that front part of the white line. And if you draw an imaginary plane going straight up, After review of the that's play, what they need to cross. So take away the touchdown. The officials rule he did not get the football to break the plane. Two, we need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Here's Lawrence to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That's one of those pivotal plays that'll just stick out in everybody's mind from this game. If he picks that off, what a momentum swing down here in the end zone. And he did his job. He knocked the ball away. But it does feel like a letdown for him and his teammates, doesn't it? A chance to intercept it, turn it back over to his offense with a chance to win the game. Bigsby. And he is going to lose yardage here. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I thought they were onto something with their play call. It kind of went reverse a little bit. Threw it on first down, then ran it on second down. Not successful either way. What play call do they come up with here on this important third down try? On third and goal, Lawrence. And this will be caught. It's a touchdown. And absolute stunned silence here as they have come in and stolen this one in overtime. As the fans exit back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces. Feel like they probably let this one slip away at home in overtime. I would agree with that, and, and their unhappiness hurts the guys at the concession stands on the way out, right? Not stopping to buy something for the kids. They just want to get home. But what a dramatic way to finish this bad boy off. I mean, this game was dramatic all the way through. That's why we got to overtime. And then to go ahead and finish it this way, the fans streaming out unhappy. But the team that came in here and won this one on the road, they sprinted to their locker room. And speaking of buying things, dinner on you tonight, Davis. I kind of figured that was coming. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. New England's offense set to go. The last series for a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10.
Zappi and the Patriots come up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Now a first throw here in overtime. And his throw is incomplete. Keeping the aggression going on defense in overtime here, a first down blitz. You know you can get burned on it big time if they pick it up, but in this situation, they brought the blitz, put some pressure on the QB, and he wasn't able to complete a pass downfield. Second and 10. And Zappi to throw. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They geared up and took the deep shot downfield, but it turned out it wasn't one-on-one -on -one coverage. Extra defenders in the area, and that one winds up incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Looking to throw, Zappi. It got his man complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he Football takes it inside foul. the 40. In overtime, you have to be smarter than that. A personal foul just can't happen. Have to have poise. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and 10. Here's Zappi. Pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Josh Allen from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And they went empty backfield, and because of that, nobody was there to pick up the blitz. And you know that offenses, when they go with the empty backfield, they have different things designed on every play to try to account for things. But what people often forget, Defense is audible as well. And a lot of times when they see an empty backfield, they audible right into a blitzing situation. Zappi from the gun. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Now Ryland for the PAT. And he's able to put it through. A drive there of just four plays. And it's capped off by the touchdown from Juju Smith-Schuster. there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Second and nine. Here's Lawrence. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Defense, 
running out of the gun with ETN. He'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to bomb that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. They'll work from the 36 on second and six. ETN once more. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against his 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. Straight ahead, ETM. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. Part of this pretty good drive they're putting together. And I know if I'm on the other sideline, that offense, kind of helpless, isn't it? Because they may not touch the football at all because they go down and score a touchdown. This thing's over. Absolutely. That would write an ending to this script. We'll see what happens. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. It's complete to Jones. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. This has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So this thing rests on the shoulders of Brandon McManus. Now whistles blow and the Patriots are going to take another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good. And they have won it here in double overtime. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory. And that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a present.